You'll start the process by using your chuck key to roughly align the diameter of the jaws to the existing part. You'll notice that you rotate the chuck to get access to the jaws and you'll use the reference lines to approximately line it up to the size of the part that will go in. As you get closer, you'll want to test fit your part to check your alignment. Again, you're just using a visual alignment of the jaws to the approximate part size. Be sure that you've got the part centered in the jaws. Give it a wiggle with your hand. And that's the rough alignment process. Now that you've got the part roughly aligned in the center of the four jaw chuck, you'll want to use a dial indicator to refine it. To use a dial indicator, place it into a magnetic mount and adjust it so that it is just beneath the top of the part. With it adjusted and firmly held in place, lift the tip, bring it over the part as you move, in this instance, the carriage to the left. Release your dial indicator tip, and now we're going to want to find the apex of the part, or the absolute top. We do that by moving the cross slide back and forth, and as the tip measurement is maximized for height, that's the top of the part. You'll see the top of the part's indicated right there. We'll use that as our reference point to measure concentricity. Now that we've visually aligned our part and used the dial indicator to find the top of the part, we're now going to use the dial indicator to zero the runout. You'll notice that in this particular mount, the jaws have tape on them to pair them. So I've got a blue and a white and a red and a yellow. During this whole operation, what we will do is move these jaws as pairs. So we'll move the blue and the white together, the red and the yellow. Now, as we rotate this, you're going to notice that it has over a hundred thousandths of runout. That's not uncommon the first time that you visually align it. If you want to move the part, you loosen one set of jaws, in this instance the white, and we tighten the blue, and you'll see the dial indicator come down. And we took out about a hundred thousandths of runout on that one maneuver. We're going to go between the blue and the, the uh, white, and you'll see that the dial indicator varies from about 95 thousandths to about 65 thousandths. About 30 thousandths worth of runout. So I have to take about 15 thousandths out. In this instance, the part has to move down. We'll tighten the blue, but there's not enough movement, so I have to loosen the white. As we loosen the white, it pops up, springs up, but I'm ultimately tightening it down. And I'm looking for that 15 thousandths, or right about at 80 on my dial. Pretty close, I'm at 79 on the white and at 81 on the blue. It's important that you stop right on the uh, index mark for the white and the blue. In this instance, I can take a thousandth out just by snugging it up just a little bit. There I'm at 79 thousandths and 79 thousandths. Looks pretty good. Now my yellow and my red will also indicate concentric at 79 thousandths if my part is round. I could choose to re-zero my gauge in this instance. I typically don't. So there I'm at about 78. Oh, overshot to 83. I now need to loosen my red and tighten my yellow. But I went backwards. Loosen the red, just a smidge, and notice these are tiny little turns, 16th of a, of a rotation at a time. And tighten. Tighten down, I'm just above 80. Right there, 79, 79. Up, oh, it's about at 80, sorry. Now I rotate it a couple times and check how close it is. You'll sometimes see the tip bounce, that's an imperfection in the material. 
but essentially we're within about a thousandth of an inch of run out on this part. Not too bad. If you're getting that close, you're doing an awesome job. That's how you'll set up your part to finish off your rod cap project. Thanks for watching.